Uh, I am Shreyas Kumar Jain, head of the Department uh, of Civil Engineering, and I welcome Mr. Bhupesh Deria on behalf of our department and our Sage University for this uh, special occasion. You are most welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, Professor Jain. Good morning, Professor Rupesh, and all the faculty members and all the students, those who have joined this uh, webinar. Uh, <clears throat> I presume that most of you must be from civil or mechanical branch. Right? So I think this is very important topic uh, you have picked up that importance of AI, data science, and engineering. Uh, generally, there's a common notion, uh, which is, of course, wrong notion, that AI and data science is essentially for only computer science and IT students. And it is not for civil or mechanical or electrical student. Uh, my talk will focus uh, not only like what civil engineers or mechanical engineers can do in AI, but uh, very generically, I will be talking about as an engineering field, uh, other than say, uh, say software engineering, which are other field where uh, <clears throat> the AI is being used. So let me just share my PPT. I would prefer that uh, while I am giving a presentation, if you guys have any question, any suggestion, any comments to make, uh, either you can really write on chat or uh, you can use your microphone to uh, uh, ask me question. Right. So my name is Bhupesh Dahriya and I have roughly around uh, 27 years experience. I have, uh, I'm graduate of uh, MNIT. So I have a deep root connection with uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, <clears throat> I have also lived in Indore and that is where I started this AGC School of Telecommunication. So I become nostalgic about Bhopal Indore. And uh, in fact, <clears throat> the founder of uh, Sage University happens to be my senior as well. <clears throat> so, for the last 27 years, so I am basically a telecommunication engineer. So I have experience in optical fiber. I have worked with Optical Telecom. Uh, for, I have been developing educational software. And since 2002, I have been involved into higher education when I started AGC School of Telecom. And then parallelly, I was also running one company, ad tech company. That time, this ad tech world was not going. So I have been involved in uh, developing uh, one of the most sophisticated online application system in India, G4 Apply. Then uh, <clears throat> I was involved in rolling out India's first online campus recruitment testing way back in 2006. And we used to do campus recruitment for TCS, Gemini, the where CAC. Entire TCS campus recruitment, uh, in fact, even today, while you appear for the examination, that is developed by our company. Uh, so I carry two hats. So I also teach AI data science use case at uh, AJS School of Data Science, uh, which we rolled out in 2015. We were the first one to start data science here in India. I also mentor students on various projects. Uh, by on other private limited company, Muni Campus, which is a tech company. Today we are offering online examination, which is AI proctored examination to various universities and we ourselves are using a lot of AI. We also rolled out uh, Seagull, which is uh, in, which has become India's largest uh, campus recruitment and automation platform used by roughly around 1500 education institutions across the country and several uh, companies to manage uh, their campus recruitment. And all these software we have been using extensively AI and data science. So personally I have seen how AI and data science is transforming. And uh, 
my own field which is telecommunication i am a telecom engineer i can't recognize today's telecom field what i have studied if i were way back in 2015 so today the telecom field is heavily uh, influenced by ai and data science and i will be talking about uh, those things so let's start our uh, <coughs> session so uh, i think that today there is not a single engineer whose life is untouched uh, with ai or data science maybe we are not aware but right from we log in on facebook or google or we drive our car we take a ride on ola or uber uh, 24 by 7 our life directly or indirectly is impacted by the ai as a human being but as a engineer whether we are civil engineer mechanical engineer telecom engineer chemical engineer we are using some other tool which is powered by the ai and data science uh, <clears throat> whether we are aware or not and it is drastically going to really change the way we have been running our engineering operations uh does not matter whether it is civil engineering whether it is a mechanical engineering whether it is electrical engineering whether it is telecom engineering and of course the boundaries are also blurring uh, as uh the smart city concept as uh, industry 4.0 is gearing up taking the rise all these fields are merging and essentially if you see uh industry 4.0 or, or any advanced technological uh, technology advancement is the extension of the human organism or the, that matter any living organism so let's say uh, our brain is like a uh, ai engine which continuously churns the data our eyes are uh, perfectly uh, natural computer vision system which looks around which of the things we are able to identify uh, between two individuals we are able to identify between the cat and dog colors we are able to detect the thread and that's a natural computer vision system which has given uh, by god to us by nature and our <clears throat> neural network is able to really process those information and we are able to really take a decision and and this is a natural system uh, nature has given it to us and whatever little we could have understood about our brain uh, we created a neural network uh, which is a deep learning and uh, <clears throat> chat gpt which is out there everybody is talking about that it is nothing it but it's a outcome of our deep learning which is a small limitation of the our human brain <clears throat> our hands are the our skin is just like a sensors our nerve system is just like a telecom network could be wireless or could be optical fiber right uh, so <clears throat> whatever the technology outside you are looking at is the actually extension of any uh, human organism or living organism for that matter uh, and this is bound to really impact uh, whether normal human being or whether engineer everybody's life now why we are uh, talking about infusion of ai or data science or why it is important or engineering or in general uh number one reason is it is improving the efficiency so we typically tend to do lot of manual work repeated work and ai is able to really take care of that uh let's say for example while you were using say making a call to uh book a cab uh this task has been taken over by say ola or uber app uh let's say another uh, a uh, perfect example of bringing efficiency is uh while you go to a shopkeeper in say tt nagar or new market and it shows you the shirts of your choices which is a manual work if you go on amazon or flipkart uh wherein millions of customers are buying shirts live on mobile phone the system is automatically able to give you the recommendation without any human intervention and that's the power of ai which reduces down the cost which improves the efficiency which improves the customer experience 
improves the customer satisfaction, engages the customer, offers him better product, right? And helps in terms of a, a discovery of those products. It is also uh, improving the safety and security. Let's say, for example, uh, examination, all of you can really relate. Uh, during COVID, I got a request from uh, NITI, uh, which is uh, <clears throat> a leading institution among top 10 in India. Uh, the director Manoj Tiwari called me up. He said, we want a, a secure system uh, where a student uh, should not be able to cheat or the cheating can be reduced on. But at the same time, they should be able to write on pen and, pen and paper. And most of the examination system, which is built, they actually ask you to write on the browser, but they wanted us to write it on pen and paper. So merging these two worlds, and at the same time, offering the security was a major concern. And when you have to really conduct the examination at a large scale. Okay. And that's where we introduce uh, AI proctoring system. And this AI proctoring system, which most of you are aware, is able to really detect your gesture. It can really uh, <clears throat> stop impersonation. So instead of me, if uh, Professor Jan APS examination, it will really give a flag. And there was incidents in uh, examination for uh, Goa University. Uh, 10 o'clock, this examination started. 10 o'clock, the gender of a person was girl. 10.15, the gender of a person became a male. And location from Panji changed to Delhi. And immediately, the, our system gave a flag and we could really stop that examination. Now, <clears throat> this can really, at, at mass scale, can offer security. Uh, let's say, so one of my batchmates from MNIT, from Navindra Yadav, a couple of years back, he rolled out a company. I think 2016, he rolled out a company, uh, Tetranix Analytics. And this company was essentially to uh, uh, manage the entire uh, data centers and identify any kind of anomaly or any kind of attack. Right? And this company was taken over by essentially Cisco and recently he rolled out another cybersecurity company, Theon, and which is again powered by the AI and machine learning and power of deep learning. And uh, <clears throat> when you are having millions and billions of attack after uh, COVID, there was a lot of tension between China and India. And uh, you'll realize that uh, every day millions of attacks are happening. And these attacks are not done by the human being. These attacks are done by the bots. So when the other end, the somebody is holding the machine gun, you can't really hold a knife to really fight. Uh, you also need machines to really fight and, and that the powerful wisdom, uh, <clears throat> I think was uh, given by Alan Turing when uh, he invented the first computer during the work, uh, World War uh, to <clears throat> stop uh, the advancement of Hitler. And, and that's where the computer was invented and that was his philosophy while Hitler and his army is using uh, <clears throat> machines, uh, which is, so they, they have to really invent a computer to uh, decode the device, which is called Enigma. That is a separate uh, topic. You can always go and check uh, Enigma and how uh, Alan Turing has decoded that and saved the world. Anyway. Uh, the another reason why AI is becoming prominent is optimization, faster development of new products, or better customer support, right? And of course, uh, smart cities and industry 4.0 is combining, uh, using a lot of sensors, using a lot of uh, IoT devices, which is generating tremendous amount of our data. So one of the uh, simple use case, let's say you have a garbage bin, and how do you know that the garbage bin is filled? Right, so you have a sensor, sensors uh, spill out the data, right? And then the, it goes to the alert center and then you go and you, uh, <clears throat> you take out the garbage from the uh, garbage bin. Uh, but let's say, so one of the projects which was done by our students uh, to predict the garbage quantity uh, for one of the municipal corporation. Uh, so that you can really plan number of vehicles and you can plan the capacity of a vehicle on particular area, right? 
so they collected the historical data about the garbage is being uh, produced and garbage being dumped into those uh, bins right industry 4.0 of course in industry 4.0 you will uh, come to a scenario wherein all the machines are connected uh, sitting over here you can really design your own bmw car you can say okay one door of bmw will be red the other door will be blue and you design your own car and this design car uh, goes to the shop floor and simultaneously the components order will be dispatched to the thousands of component manufacturers and this this whole design goes to the assembly line and as per the design sheet the doors will be automatically printed uh, so those kind of uh, world we are moving towards uh, anyway the initial stage of industry 4.0 connected factories are already in reality uh, in Volkswagen or in, in Germany or even in India you will start seeing in Japan most of the mobile manufacturing is being done with the industry 4.0 devices with the rise of 5g you see uh, this is happening this is going at an exponential pace so the iot devices uh, the 5g the internet the customer the cloud they have all come together but the one of the most essential component that you have to have a brain and that ai plays a role of a brain a good brain which can really take a decision at its own and improve the efficiency uh, with this background, let me devote, say, another five minutes to set up a context about uh, what is AI, what is ML, and what is data science. And then I will talk about how it is being used in civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, telecom, right, those aspects. But um, I think before we dive into that, it is important to understand from 20,000 feet view what is AI. Uh, since uh, 15, uh, early 15, mid 50, Scientists then started thinking, uh, how about uh, making machines to do tasks which are simple for the human being? What are the simple tasks for the human being? Identifying the colors, identifying the distinguishing the voice between your mother and father, right? Uh, identifying the alphabets, right? But it took human being scientists roughly around 70 years to reach to that stage that today we can really identify alphabets. We can identify cats and dogs correctly, right? And uh, the great movement in civilization has happened just two months back when GPT-3 was launched, that now we can really talk to the machine just like a human being, right? Unlike selecting the filter. Today, today you can really go and talk to the GPT-3 that, okay, I'm a mechanical engineer, should I really do a data science or not, right? Uh, which requires tremendous amount of uh, understanding. You can really go and talk that, okay, I have a 10 million data of telecom, uh, which algorithm I should be using? Should I use the Spark MLIP or should I use the TensorFlow or Scikit-learn, right? Uh, so, or right from very basic uh, questions that, what is the use of probability? Or if I really take one eighth out of a pack of 52 cards, what is the probability of getting one eighth? And so it can really solve uh, those uh, questions and that's how human being uh, talks to each other. <clears throat> and, and that's a profound work uh, which has been done. So the idea, which was more of a philosophy that let's bring machines closer to the human being so that they can really mimic the human behavior. Uh, and, and they should be able to really take a decision at a large scale. So essentially when you, drive a car in a city like a Mumbai, you rely more on the Google map than the God, right? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, constantly you will, Google map will start giving you the direction, will give you the shortest uh, path. Uh, and Google map, there is nothing about artificial in Google map intelligence because they are real people driving the real car, millions of people on Mumbai roads, and they're giving you the data in the real time. Right? So there is nothing artificial about the data and there is nothing artificial about the intelligence. Earlier, say 15 years back, I used to see uh, the cabbie guys, they used to really call the other guy. Are us area mein wo, uh, airport ke side mein traffic kaisa hai? Kulla side mein traffic kaisa hai? 
अरे उधर मत आना उधर पानी जम गया है राइट अब इस तरह की बात करने की जरूरत नहीं है राइट सो देर नो वन ऑफ वन कम्युनिकेशन दे आर मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल दो इन दैट एरिया दे आर इमिटिंग दर डेटा राइट and google is able to really collect that data and is able to really give you that intelligence in google map and that's what the artificial intelligence is so my definition of artificial intelligence is essentially aggregating the human intelligence or machine intelligence at a scale right and give you the actionable insight for a better and decision making and faster decision making and that's what artificial intelligence is all about and to give you a latest example about chat gpt chat gpt has scrape and analyze the data of all google books wikipedia data right it has analyze almost every document which is available on the internet and today you don't have to really go and scan through those documents you ask any question and chat gpt will be able to really answer you and what essentially it, it is it is basically helping you to take the decision at a faster speed at a scale that's what ai is all about and all this intelligence which is coming there is nothing artificial but will not delve into debate whether it is artificial or whether it is real intelligence but in my opinion these are the real intelligence uh ai uh, machine learning deep learning they all are the fields of artificial intelligence right so ai is a more of a philosophy of bringing machine closer to the human being how do you really achieve that so machine learning helps you to identify the pattern computer vision helps you to identify and uh, and make sense out of the data which is uh, vision data which is actually video or images just like we have eyes to uh, give us the vision uh, natural language processing helps you to identify and identify the meaning out of the uh, written text right and uh, chat gpt is 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 heavily based on the nlp it robotics gives you power to just dive like a human being uh, it is also a field of ai speech to text text to speech right <clears throat> they all are part of the fields of uh, artificial intelligence uh, today's artificial intelligence has not got a power of touch or smell right so these are the powers ai doesn't have but i think the way the progress is happening within 10 years we'll see the significant work in uh, touch and smell there is already a chinese scientist in sweden has built uh, artificial skin to actually <clears throat> give you the senses right so maybe tomorrow when you uh, book a order from swiggy uh, you will be able to really see the temperature through the artificial skin <clears throat> and maybe after 30 years you will be able to see the uh sensors giving you this smell <clears throat> anyway so what is essentially machine learning machine learning is uh, ai and data is a sub field of ai and it is a data science technique which helps you to identify the pattern in a data so let's say tomorrow i want to predict what will be the rain in bhopal whether there will be rain or not so i can analyze the last 20 years data and see whether it rained during this period on 14th of january in july or plus minus 2 3 days and based on that i can really arrive to a conclusion that it will rain it is as simple as that i borrowed a money three times i didn't pay you back so will you give me the money four times the answer is no right <laughs> so it is you analyze the data of past and there is no nothing rocket science uh and you are able to really do that so the key in machine learning or data science you need to really have the data the additional uh, important thing in machine learning is the machine learning has changed the traditional way of writing the codes right so you don't have to rewrite the code again and again uh, you feed the data and based on the data the code learns itself right so you don't have to really write the code just like say spam filter of gmail so gmail spam filters you don't have to rewrite the code every day as the it reads the email it keeps on updating uh, its intelligence right so without rewriting the code right? that's a smart way so in mathematical term what machine learning essentially does uh, machine learning tries to identify the relationship between the output and input so essentially what you try to really do you train the f of x equals to y which is you try to really train the function right so you have the set of input and output values uh, let's say 
uh, you want to predict the how price of a house, right? So you know the house of a pri price is a function of the size of a house and the location, age of the house, right? Or multiple factors, right? And you can really draw equation, right? So you can draw equation that uh, <clears throat> f of p is uh, depends on say location, uh, age, right? Those kind of factor. And if you have the say thousand house prices, uh, and you know their size, you know their location, other stuff, you can really establish equation and you can identify the constants, right? Unlike Newton's equation, wherein you have a study equation where you know the constant. In the real world, most of the real world, we do not know the relationship, right? And this relationship is pretty fuzzy and you don't know the constants. And that's the reason you need to identify the equation and the relationship. And that's where machine learning comes into the handy that it gives you the generalized rule. The, the whole objective of mathematics is essentially to find the generalized rule. And most of the cases we have been able to find out the generalized rule. Like for example, relationship between the speed and distance, right? Gravity and all those kind of stuff wherein well-established relationship is there. But in a in lot of cases, we don't have the relationship and it is extremely difficult to find the relationship. Let's say, for example, uh, how do machine identify the uh, difference between a uh, professor Jen's face and my face, right? It is extremely difficult. Uh, for machine, it is only a pixel, right? It is, it is a pixel which is converted into the matrices, right? And that's a data representation. It can only understand zero than one, right? Uh, <clears throat> I leave it over here uh, because beyond that it becomes complicated. But the point which I wanted to emphasize that the entire machine learning revolves around this function. Uh, it revolves around, so you need to have very good understanding about matrices, vectors, linear equation, which all of us we have studied at the 10th level, 11th level, right? So it is nothing rocket science. You have to just brush up those concepts, right? And, and just to understand uh, again, uh, it, it, it established the relationship between the output and input. Like to give you a simple example, if you feed 20 images, 100 images of cat and 100 images of a dog to a machine, uh, which is algorithm or CPU, it will be able to really identify the next image whether with a fair accuracy, whether it is a cat or dog, <clears throat> right? And, and that's how the machine learning and deep learning works. Deep learning automates the uh, feature extraction, uh, which is again a subfield of uh, machine learning and deep learning is growing exponential uh, since uh, 2012. All these fields have grown in last uh, decade or so. Uh, they, they, they are pretty new. Uh, on university parlance, it has been there for last 70 years. But in last 20 years, these things have taken uh, exponential mm -hmm. growth because there's a large availability of the data. Uh, cloud computing softwares are there. You have better algorithms a lot of research is being happening in this area. But this is the best time. Today, we can proudly say that India has become the world's largest country to produce AI and data science talent. <clears throat> so with this background, let us start the use case in telecom. <clears throat> telecom is close to my heart. I have seen it growing. Uh, exponentially in last, uh, say, 27 years. <clears throat> so one of the major uh, use case in telecom is network optimization. So the AI algorithm, machine learning algorithms analyzes the data which is coming from the various networking devices uh, with the various BTS, which is enabled to really optimize that where, how the traffic is fluctuating and how I need to really allocate the my resources in dynamic fashion. Uh, the other area is predictive maintenance and that use case is not only in telecom, that use case is whether it is a, a factory or whether it is a data center, whether it is in civil engineering, whether it is a mechanical engineering. Uh, predictive maintenance is almost in every area. So uh, recently, I think 2021, Airtel deployed uh, Avensus solutions to predict uh, any kind of network outage, right? So any kind of network fault happens on your system, uh, before it happens, it is able to really give you the prediction, right? Uh, 
uh, Jio has also deployed a lot of systems. So almost every telecom company is using predictive maintenance. Most of the modern factories in uh, Industry 4.0 are using predictive maintenance. While I was working in Optal Telecom, we used to have the periodic maintenance wherein uh, every week or every 10 days, we used to really uh, do the maintenance on machine. Gone are those days. Uh, you Now the days has come wherein you analyze the data and you are able to predict when this machine is likely to fail. Uh, to give you example, let's say, um, uh, when you're driving a car or when you're driving a bike, if you start hearing any abnormal noises, you get to know that some issue is there in the bearing or wheel, right? And you immediately uh, reach to uh, a mechanic uh, to resolve these issues. Now, these noises are nothing, but these are the vibrations, right? So these vibrations can be easily caught by any kind of sensor. So let's say, for example, in railway track, which Indian government has, Indian railway has also deployed, in, in, in some places. So if you have to identify if there is some abnormality on the railway track or a wheel, uh, these drivers, uh, they actually hear those voices, uh, the abnormal noises. So if the noises, noise or vibration becomes abnormal, they know that there's something wrong on the track or the wheel. Now this job is being done by the sensors, which collect the data, huge amount of the data. Right, and, and based on that data, you are able to really predict that, yes, something is fishy, something is going to really wrong. And before that wheel completely tears off or that track completely uh, <clears throat> destroys, you actually do the corrective action without waiting for the cyclic action so that you can really avoid any kind of major mishaps. Location-based services, uh, there are a lot of companies in Canada, let's say, for example, this, you guys are studying in uh, Sage University, let's say you're visiting campus, one o'clock, you finish your uh, session, or let's say five o'clock, you finish your session, uh, you're using Geo or Vodafone, they exactly know your location precisely, and they have been tracking your pattern. So they know that, yes, one o'clock, you finish your classes, and then you go to some other place. So they know the location, they know what time you're moving out and they can always send an alert that, hey, this is one o'clock, uh, are you feeling hungry? Use this uh, MACD coupon and you'll get a 15% discount, right? Uh, those kind of location-based services can easily be offered the way Facebook and Google offers. Uh, Indian companies are pretty backward in this area. Uh, I have been heavily criticizing them for last 10 years that they are not leveraging that. But there are a lot of telcos out there which has leverage on location bus services. But this is a multi-billion dollar opportunity for the telco. Next, uh, network and tower planning. So one tower in telecom costs you roughly around 50 lakh rupees. So let's say if you're planning a network and you're putting up 100 towers, instead of 100 tower, if you optimize planning and if you're able to really manage with only say 90 towers, you save 10 towers money. And 10 towers money, 10 multiplied by 50 lakh, it's a 5 crore rupee saving you have, right? And so major uh, expenditure in telecom happens in the tower. It is a heavily capex-based industry. And that is the reason most of the telecom company, they have visited uh, tower infrastructure company separately and network company separately. So this is a huge saving. Uh, and most of the telecom companies across the world, they have started using the AI and data science tools to optimize their network they have been able, using this uh, tool to identify their site where they need to report based on uh, what is the past data, how much subscriber are there, what is the population, what is the network density, and all those kind of stuff, and what is the paying capacity. Right? Uh, customer service now slowly and gradually, let's say um, you have started seeing that automated calls are coming now. <clears throat> Uh, in 2015, IBM launched Watson, and since then I have been uh, advocating that another 10 years you will not have any human being working in call center. And GPT-3 has now has taken it to a different level. So now in next five years, 10 years, you will find that uh, every company which has launched the website, instead of website, they will have the conversational bot, right? 
and you can really talk to these machines and these machines never get tired just like a human being right and you have uh, extremely good uh, text to voice or voice to text conversion api is available and at extremely good accuracy level so even in hindi i have seen in ajay grambal award jury round a lot of indian companies they have presented uh, their conversational bot which can really talk just like a human being and they can understand the english <clears throat> because most of us we don't purely speak hindi or english specifically this generation and they are able to pick up the lingo of english so you are dealing with machine do not get tired and they become more and more intelligent as they talk to you so they will not irritate you here please tell me your name because you have already told your name 10 times right so you pick up the phone machine will be able to identify based on your voice based on your number that who you are and the machine need not really type on the computer to find out the problem because the machine has got the data in itself right <clears throat> it's like a brain talking so you so they will be much more faster and you will they will be able to resolve the issues much better way and chat gpt has demonstrated that yes they can really talk just like a human being and they can really have a humanly conversation and even intellectual discussions right so uh, this uh, ibm watson which is started this whole race i think chat gpt is going to really finish and this is going to really accelerate so i don't believe that even 10 years will take time within next 5 years you'll have the call center industry completely wiped out across the world right so humans will not be needing mm -hmm. uh, next fraud detection yes Uh, machines are able to really analyze a large amount of the data uh, at a fraction of second. Let's say uh, IBM Watson can analyze 700 million documents in one second, right? So they can have a capability to analyze structured, unstructured data, large volume of the data. They, they can easily identify the pattern that from which area uh, people are submitting wrong KYC, right? So uh, at our lab, some of our student has built a system. which can actually detect uh, if you have used somebody else aadhar card and morphed your photograph and put it over there it can actually identify that your photograph in the aadhar card is a fake photograph right that level of fraud detection it can really do in kyc compliance and other stuff right uh, <clears throat> resource allocation yes they can really do that network security uh i gave you the example of uh, theom and tetrionix these kind of system can really do uh, analyze the large volume of the data and uh, identify the threat <clears throat> 5g is completely a software based right and 5g is purely based on the ai so all optimization of the network right operations all is being managed uh, so ai and uh, telecom has managed finally Uh, fully in in 5G. So that's about telecom. Uh, there are other hundreds of cases in telecom, right? Which we can discuss. Software engineering, so code generation. So code generation has been a, a long dream of AI engineers, but finally it has come true. Again, OpenAI has released a, a codex. which is a specific api to write the code so you as a mechanical engineer civil engineer don't have to worry about the syntax now it has become much easier for you as well so you need to understand the broader problem which you want to really solve and the code generation can be done by the uh, the ai you can use chat gpt and ask them to really write a code that okay uh, write html page uh, code uh, uh, for my home page right Uh, or you can even uh, ask them to really write a uh, code to detect uh, say facial gesture right uh, so now civil mechanical electrical electronics engineer those who are afraid of the code since they have not studied they don't have to really worry about that right this is like just manual task uh, just like if you have the complicated calculation you don't do it manually in your head right you just open your excel sheet or open the calculator and you outsource that so this code writing stuff is going to be completely outsourced nobody will be writing the code right they will be integrating so then the software development uh, product development becomes much easier the only thing you have to be more uh, creative uh, that what problems you want to really solve so uh, 
uh, for last a couple of years i have been advocating that the most important skill set in future which will play you dividend is your ability to ask the right question right solution anybody can really give but do you have the right question right <clears throat> next uh, bug detection yes so you can really submit a buggy software and it can really tell you because this has really uh, so open ai has analyzed uh, roughly almost all code on github and they know what kind of bugs are there they can really identify the pattern just like a human being so we, when you really try when you have written a millions of lines of code you already know which code is clean or not so the same thing machines are able to really do when they really see uh, billions of lines of code written by millions of software developer they actually identify the pattern which is a clean which is a buggy code uh, test automation yes there's multiple uh, tools there are hundreds of tools are out there one of my friend uh, he recently acquired a company in dubai which actually automates uh, the entire testing so you don't require a manual tester to do the testing the ai does that for you uh, predictive maintenance recommendation so the ai system the codex actually also offers you the recommendation in term of you the what kind of framework, what kind of uh, next code you need to really write, right? Uh, <clears throat> natural advancement in natural language processing has actually given uh, exponential rise to these kind of stuff, right? So that's a, a latest uh, development uh, in this area. And these are very promising and uh, uh, promising to the whole world, but specifically for uh, non-coders. So now you don't have to really get intimidated, right? So uh, now there is no difference between you and uh, computer science guy, right? Because you have the tool along with you, which can really write a code for you. So don't worry about that. Hmm. Civil engineering. Uh, so recently I saw one nomination came into data science and wherein what they are able to really do, they are able to, let's say you build a, a bridge. And you have seen a lot of uh, cases in India wherein uh, bridges have fallen down. Uh, during the rainy season, right? Uh, because a lot of erosion which happens and a lot of part of the bridge uh, uh, pillars are submerged into the water and you don't know what kind of erosion is happening. And that's where they're using the drone and drone carries some marine drone. They carry the camera, high precision camera, and they're able to capture the images and they have built up the model which is able to do the uh, analysis, able to classify uh, those images that what kind of damage or what kind of erosion is having, right? Uh, I'm not able to recall this company name and they, they raised um, a multi-million dollar funding and they're doing tremendously good work, right? Uh, even telecom company, they use drone-based stuff. Uh, so you can't really uh, put a human being every time on the tower. So instead of putting somebody on tower, you send a drone, and they're able to really see the positioning of the antenna or the corrosion which is happens on the uh, top of the tower and, and then you can redo really the corrective actions. Right. Airwork is the company which actually uh, analyze the, uh, take the air view of uh, aerial view of the site, uh, 2D and 3D and put into a CAD CAM and are able to really uh, create uh, good designs and accelerate the entire uh, process. <clears throat> so there, there are hundreds of software, hundreds of companies which are coming in this area, uh, which are actually helping you to do your project management. Uh, so you you have been managing project, say, for example, last 20 years, then you have enough of data. Companies like, um, say, l &T, uh, companies like Sapoji or Funvi, right? So these companies, they have a massive amount of the data or for that matter, Hidan and Nani. And if you really feed this data to the machine, machines is able to really identify the pattern that where you are having the time, uh, which season, uh, which month in Bombay, you, your project will be delayed or, or because of any other reason. So any new project which you are able to really launch, they will be able to give you uh, some kind of uh, red flags. They will be able to give you some kind of timeline, right? Uh, you also have a lot of automated software which can really do the scheduling, which can do the coordination among the various stakeholders. There are various chatbots are there, which is very low level of uh, usage into the uh, for coordination. 
but resource scheduling, uh, analyzing the data, these are something which is very critical in this area. Monitoring and surveillance. La, so I remember in uh, 2020 when we were having this uh, Ages Graham Bell Award talent uh, function in New Delhi, uh, February, uh, Mr. Gatkari came on the stage and he challenged all the academicians, all the companies sitting over there that millions of people die in India on road accident and what the hell you guys are doing. Uh, can't you really build a software which can identify the pothole on the roads and give the alert and also link it and penalize with those, those who are constructing this road. Um, <clears throat> so when time came to for me to give a vote of thanks, I took this chance and I accepted the challenge and I told Mr. Gadkari that yes, give me two days time. We have already worked on something on this similar line and come to your home and I'll show you what can be done. And uh, after two days, he invited me. After two days, I visited the home. I have shown you, him that, yes, you can really actually take. So at our lab, our student faculty members have built the model where actually you can really take the uh, data of the potholes on the road. And there are multiple ways you can really collect through the drones or through the mobile phone or through the cameras putting on the vehicle. Uh, multiple ways. And then uh, once you take those photographs, the AI model, machine learning model, deep learning model can actually categorize them into various uh, categories, uh, benign or severe or lethal, right? <clears throat> and, and you can actually also build a database which, uh, uh, which will have the details and coordinates of those, those who have built that road. It also picks up the GPS location and, and that's how you're able to really integrate. And uh, we have shown some early uh, work uh, to the government. And that's one of the area where a lot of companies across the world are working because the roads are constructed at a massive scale and uh, you have to really monitor those roads. Sometimes some countries, even the roads are not being constructed and contractor take the money on the paper. <clears throat> how do you really handle that? And there are hundreds of companies uh, worldwide they're doing and a lot of work need to be done here in India. Hmm. Uh, mechanical engineering, again, predictive maintenance is one of the area and I gave you the example of uh, rail. So <clears throat> while the train is going, you can really uh, put the sensors which can really uh, calibrate and see whether the vibrations are abnormal or not. And then you can really take the corrective actions most of the factories, uh, industry 4.0 factories, even which have not, there are a lot of startups in India, um, at least half a dozen I am aware of, they have built these solutions to uh, do the predictive maintenance and they're doing it with extremely good accuracy. Right? And they are utilizing the power of machine learning and deep learning in this area. Uh, quality control, uh, autonomous systems, uh, we have seen, uh, driverless cars, we have seen industrial robots uh, going and working in a quite hazardous environment wherein it is extremely difficult for human beings to really walk. Uh, Japan is pretty advanced in terms of using the industrial robots, but uh, within a couple of years, this is going to become much easier. Drones has become very popular here in, in India, and I gave you an example of telecom tower and uh, submarine drones, which actually goes down the dam and uh, bridges um, to identify those uh, issues. Optimization and uh, uh, simulation, of course, this is a long uh, use case, which uh, mechanical engineers has been using. Uh, predictive modeling, uh, robotics automation, smart manufacturing, and I gave you the example of smart manufacturing, which is going to really grow uh, under the hood of, uh, say, Industry 4.0, uh, which will really have the personalized uh, product development at much faster pace and uh, much efficient pace. Electrical engineering, one of the couple of use cases you can really read. Let me give you one or two use cases. One of the major use cases, power saving. So Nokia, Eva is one of the product and a lot of telecom companies are using to save power. Uh, a lot of consulting companies, AI companies have come up and they are offering their solutions in movie theaters, in malls, uh, in industrial complexes, 
uh, wherein they are able to really use the machine learning, deep learning algorithms to identify which are the spots where, and they're using the IoT as well uh, to identify which are the spots where you don't read uh, need a lot of energy. Uh, they are able to really save a lot of energy and they typically charge on the saving. So let's say if I am able to really reduce on your bill by 10 lakh rupees, I will take certain percentage of that. And, and this kind of AI based consulting for power saving has become, uh, it, it has become quite prominent here in India. And I think that's the area where uh, you as a student, you can also think of launching your own startup. Uh, smart grids, <clears throat> now they're using, uh, so essentially, if we really go back again, uh, machine learning algorithms, deep learning algorithms are able to really analyze the large volume of the data and they're able to identify the pattern and that use, and once you have the large data, uh, you can identify the pattern. So in smart grid, you are able to really do the demand forecast. You can identify where the losses are happening, right? Uh, you can predict uh, the outage, right? All those kind of stuff you can really do. Right. Uh, you can also see that yes, if the production level is going down, how do I really take the feed from the renewable sources, which could be uh, say wind mill or which could be solar power, right? Uh, all those kind of stuff. Uh, recently, last month only, I've seen one company based out of Delhi, and they have launched uh, electrical vehicle charging uh, management system along with the electric vehicle so like just ola or uber they give you the uh, say petrol or diesel cars uh, these folks they have deployed the fleet of electrical vehicles but at the same time they have also deployed the electrical vehicle charging centers and they all are able to really manage and at the back end they are using the ai to uh, optimize and manage their operations right <clears throat> Now, what are the challenges in AI adoption? So I think there is a long list, but I would not like to really run through the uh, laundry list. Uh, we need to be creative uh, in terms of really applying where we can really use the power. Uh, again, repeating myself that yes, deep learning has got extraordinary capability of analyzing the data at much faster pace and ability to find out the connection which human mind is incapable of. Right. And, and that power we can really use. It is like a God-like power, right? If something uh, is between the God and human being, I think that is AI, right? That's quite an overstatement, but that's a practical statement today, right? Because human being has nothing seen uh, as powerful as chat GPT. If there is something closer to Saraswati Devi, that is a chat GPT today, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> So, and anyway, the philosophers, mathematical philosophers say mathematics is the key to read the mind of the God. And I think finally we are seeing the practical application of mathematics in deep learning. So one of the major challenge in terms of uh, deployment is lack of awareness. People think that this is only about coding. This is only for the software engineer. I want to break this myth for all the civil engineers today sitting over here. That is not about coding. Now the coding, is outsourced to GPT. Don't worry about the coding. It is about, can you really formulate the question? If you can formulate the question, then hundreds of people can really solve, right? It is about offering the solution to the end mile, offering to the customer. Can you really save him money? Can you really improve his life? Can you really improve his productivity? Can you really help him to generate more revenue? Can you really offer a secure society, right? Uh, the kind of stuff which is happening in uh, uh, Joshi Pet, right? Uh, it is heartening, right? And it is the incompetence of most of our Indian engineers, which is civil engineers, mechanical engineers, administrators collectively, right? So engineers have failed, administration has failed, right? Uh, without any planning, without any simulation, without any thought, we have done the construction and think the entire city is coming to the brink and even God cannot really save. So the puja part, which is happening in Mandir, it is not going to really help because this is a human-based disaster which has created. Machine learning, deep learning has the power to really actually give you the simulation 
that what will happen after 50 years if you create the map, them, right? Because it is all about analyzing the data. Human and traditional system does not have capability to analyze the large volume of the data. That's the problem, which is not the limitation with the any deep learning based systems and with the power of cloud. So I recommend that yes, we remove our awareness, we change our mindset that it is nothing different. It is not going to eat our job. Yeah, it is going to make us unemployed if we really keep distance, right? Because anyway, civil mechanical engineers have a difficulty in getting the job. This is the right time. If you don't embrace these tools, anyway, you will further become unemployed. Because those who say that AI is going to generate more number of jobs, either they are idiot or they are liars. They don't understand AI. This is something different. This is, this is profound. And this is going to eat millions of people's job. And one of the major job it is going to hit is the teacher's job, software engineer's job, right? So better that we really take this tool on our side, understand, make it friend, so that we become the future ready in terms of our employability. Right? Uh, another issue is skills. People don't have the skill. Uh, data quality, data leveling, absence of uh, digital infrastructure, silo system, these are all manageable issues, but I think skill mindset is a major thing. Uh, this whole webinar will be success if I can really change your mindset a little bit. That wake up, it is not civil engineers can become good AI engineers. And I have trained personally in last eight years, I have seen hundreds of civil engineers and mechanical engineers done extremely good job in the AI and data science because they have the domain. Uh, how the bridge are constructed, how the building is being constructed, how the dams are constructed, this domain, a computer science guy doesn't have, right? <clears throat> uh, how the engine functions, a mechanical engineer has. So two of my mechanical engineers, they're working in Ford research and Mercedes research. So Mercedes research, uh, one of the uh, data scientists, key data scientists, lead data scientists as R student, right? He's a mechanical engineer, right? Uh, Teradata, one of the guy, Chirag, he hails from uh, Indoor only. He's a civil engineer. He became a good AI engineer. Right? So don't worry. Don't think that this is not for you. This is for you. And I have given you enough example how these fields are being uh, using these areas. Thank you so much. I would also recommend that apply for this Aegis Grahamel Talent Hunt uh, uh, examination. Uh, this we do the national wide examination and wherein we give 100% scholarship. So 20, we gave 20 student 100% scholarship. Uh, AICT chairman, Dr. Sahasabuddin, and um, uh, Mr. Gadkari awarded 100 students, 20 students complete 100% scholarship. And these candidates, they work on these exciting projects, uh, which I spoke about. And they, uh, they become the uh, AI and uh, data science leaders. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys can really connect me on LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Professor Jain, uh, Professor Rupesh, uh, express my gratitude for organizing this uh, webinar. If any questions, I would be happy to take one or two questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, to the listeners, if any questions is there, they can ask freely to the sir. So I think there is a question from Dr. Atul. AI and ANN are the same thing. They are the subfield. Uh, AI is a broader field, as I told you. Uh, ANN is a subfield of uh, artificial uh, AI. Uh, <clears throat> so within AI, you have machine learning, you have a deep learning, uh, you have robotics, you have a speech to text, you have text to speech, right? So there are multiple fields are there. Uh, ANN is part of the machine learning, <clears throat> which is actually a replica of whatever little we have understood about the human brain. Does it make sense, Professor Atul? Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, now, I would like to invite our uh, uh, senior professor, Dr. Atul Bhatore. So, uh, please, sir, and uh, give a word of thanks to our uh, prominent speaker today. Thank you very much, Professor. Mm, I would like to thank Bhupesh, sir, and his entire team for such a wonderful knowledge sharing. Uh, I have already worked in ANN field in my PhD thesis, sir. Uh, you are talking about the road prediction, pothole prediction. I have already done in ANN in my PhD thesis. So I'm wonderful. very much interested in this field. 
great and, great and i'm sure that our students will give a new idea for today's session and we have already included this chapter in our curriculum sir in our right. btech section we have already a subject ai in engineering so, so i'm uh, i'm sure that our students will get benefited for this session and uh, definitely we will uh, pleasure to have you in our university for the big session wonderful whenever i am there in indore i would love to visit you uh, sure sure sir sure, sure i have a long fond memories in indore uh, sure sir also i would like to thank all the definitely our... love to collaborate with you on any kind of uh, research in the ai uh, deep learning uh, definitely definitely sir i would also like to thanks our all the participants for listening presently thank you very much thank you thank you so much and all the participants wish you good luck bye bye thank you so much bye, -bye.